Okay, so let's get started. When I say dead, it doesn't necessarily mean that nobody plays it anymore, but it definitely means that the game is no longer going to be developed, pushed to its further extent, or it's not going to grow. So let's first talk about the tiers. We have S tier, which is did nothing wrong. In this tier is going to be all the games that honestly, there was absolutely nothing that it did wrong. Everything that caused it to die was literally out of their control, whether it was bad timing, whether it was bad developers. So that's S tier. In A tier, it's a, a couple missteps somewhere, but a great game. So this is where like, you know, a couple things they could have done better. They could have tweaked a couple things here and there, but otherwise it's a pretty phenomenal game. And I think it probably should have done better. Then in B tier, we just have games that just deserved better, but you know, you kind of knew they were going to die. You know, maybe they deserve to last like another year or just have a little bit more of a player base. That's B tier. C tier are, are for the games that death makes sense. Like, you know, like, yeah, it makes sense why it died, but it could have been better. So these are ones that are like, you're not going to question its death. In D tier, it's going to be for the things that it was obviously always going to die. That's where D tier is. It's these games that when you see them, you're like, mm, that looks fun, but it's dead, right? And then an F tier is dead on arrival. Games that just did not even have a chance. Like right when you played it, you're like, I don't want to play this ever again. This game's dead. F tier is crazy, man. Probably not gonna be that many in F tier, but the things that are like, you'll, you'll know when you know. Okay, so right off the bat, we got Among Us. Among Us is perfectly the best example of B tier. Why is it B tier? Well, one, it still has the potential to make a huge comeback and it's gonna do fine with the VR side of things. This is a perfect example of a game that just deserved better. The game itself, gameplay wise, ton of fun, but they didn't get any updates. That's the biggest problem. If it got updates consistently, this game would be like, one of the biggest games of all time, period. They just stopped, you know? And Among Us, you know, even though I love the gameplay, it's 100% the developer's fault why it died. That's why it's in B tier. Then we got Apex Legends Mobile. Apex Legends Mobile, I was never really a big fan of, to be completely honest with you. I always thought it was kind of like ridiculous that th they're going to make a mobile version that was like low-key kind of better than the main version, or at least at the time it was better because it had team deathmatch, it had solo modes, it had a bunch of really cool things. It had its own legends, it had Fade and Rhapsody, all these really cool, unique individual legends. But beyond that, it was like, who is this for right like who's actually gonna play the mobile version of this game you feel me so on that end i think it probably fits perfectly in seats here its death makes sense but i think it could have been better if they maybe did a better job at like integrating the apex mobile game into the main game so it didn't feel like this separate thing and i think that's what really ultimately stopped it from doing well was that it was so separate from the main game they still have a chance apex legends mobile to make a slight comeback if they relaunch as like kind of an offshoot of the main game where you could still play apex legends with your friends and stuff on console and PC, which I know people were going to hate, but like at the same time, you're going to get a lot more bots in your lobby, which is good. So you can get some 20 bombs for sure. But uh, I hope we get Fade and Rhapsody in the regular game, especially Fade. I think Fade is tight. I think his abilities are cool. I want to play him on the regular game. That's all I'm saying. Back for Blood. So we got Back for Blood. Oh, man. I'm gonna put it in C tier above Apex Legends Mobile. Its death always made sense. Let me explain why. The reality is like, it was just trying to be Left 4 Dead 3, but it wasn't as good as Left 4 Dead. And also I feel like the zombie genre is just, it's just too late, you know what I mean? I just feel like Back 4 Blood just was always gonna be in a bad position. I think that's what makes Back 4 Blood's death kind of sad. It was just definitely too late, man. Dude, do you know what the irony is? The irony is if they release Left 4 Dead 3, that game would be thriving because people have been craving Left 4 Dead 3. And the game was basically that, but it's some parts of it that don't feel as good as the Left 4 Dead series, and I think that's what makes people really upset, you know? Yeah, it was just way too late, simply put. Blood Hunt is an A tier. I think Blood Hunt is an A tier for sure. The only thing that was holding it back was its aesthetic, because otherwise its gameplay feels really good, the movement feels clean, the core mechanics that they added in general are super fun, and for some people, the aesthetic is what they love about it. They love the vampire vibe, they love the, the creepy, ghoulish thing that happens with Blood Hunt, but for me, I think that's literally what made it hard to market for a more general and wide audience, because otherwise, it's genuinely a pretty solid game. The vampire stuff, it also held it creatively back because you couldn't do too many out there things because you had to stay within the scope of what, what do vampires do? Like vampires, we levitate, they, they can make traps, they can climb, but you can't make them do like other really cool rambunctious things that you could do with other game genres. But Blood Hunt is pretty damn good. Just so you know, like I personally believe that the games that I put in B tier up could potentially make a comeback and come back from the dead. We got Fall Guys. Oh man, Fall Guys, where do we start, man? I'm gonna put it above among Us and B tier because I do think the developers cared a lot more about Fall Guys than Among Us, but I also think that the Fall Guys gameplay loop needed constant updates to be fun because the difference between Among Us, like people could have been on one Among Us map. As long as we got like a new map every like three months, Among Us would have thrived. Fall Guys has a huge disadvantage where it needs not just one map every now and then, it needs like multiple, it needs a full map pack like every couple months to survive. So I think the one thing that they could have done to truly save Fall Guys right off the bat is to make a map maker. 
Had they made a map maker, that would have not only created a whole side community of people making fun, goofy obstacle courses and, and matches and all these other things that would just keep a whole separate community alive. But on top of that, the main core community of people that just like messing around and, and playing with their friends on new stuff would also be thriving. So I think Fall Guys just required constant crazy amount of updates. But the only thing that they updated consistently every single time was mostly cosmetic, which were great. Like all the collabs that Fall Guys has done with all these big AAA games. And you know what I'm talking about? They collabed with everybody under the sun, kind of like Fortnite. That was dope. And I'm really happy for them. And that's why Fall Guys made a comeback when it released on Nintendo Switch and came out for free and stuff, right? But we already saw that the player base has dwindled again to a point where it was before. That's why I think it's B tier. I think it just deserved better. And who knows? Maybe I'll make a third wave. Maybe I'll make a third resurgence and have a huge comeback again because I don't mind it. If any game made a huge comeback and was like the number one trending game again, if it was Fall Guys, I wouldn't be upset. But I don't think it will, honestly. So B tier. Oh. So this is the most controversial take. A lot of people really got upset with me on Twitter, on YouTube, on everything. And they're probably going to be upset with me right now, even in the comments section. But I put Halo Infinite in the dead games category. Obviously, I understand as somebody that plays the game a lot, as somebody who's Onyx, which is like the highest rank, as somebody who forged a ton, as somebody who keeps up with like Mint Blitz and all of these other content creators, I love Halo Infinite. I still do love Halo Infinite, but I'm not going to deny that I do believe that its trajectory is only going down. Yeah, I don't think it's a dead, dead game at the moment because there are still people that play it religiously. You can see that the viewership is dwindling. You could see that the pros are backing out. You can see all these esports teams are getting out of Halo. You could see that people just don't care about it as much anymore. And this new season came and just went. And now we're back to our usual like 5,000 concurrent. <laughs> Halo Infinite is the definition of deserved better. And I'm going to put it above Fall Guys. Halo Infinite literally would have been in a a phenomenal position if it was with a different developing team and I don't want to just blame 3 for 3 because Microsoft is the reason if they just waited an extra year right like say Halo Infinite released in its current state a month ago it's not perfect it's nowhere near perfect there's still issues with cosmetics there's issues with desync however in terms of what the package is it's significantly better if we had Forge on drop if we had all these maps on drop if we had all these different just updates in general on drop I do believe that it would have done phenomenally, but because it came out like it did in its state, it didn't do well. It had 20 million people playing it when it first released. 20 million people tried Halo Infinite and only 3000 people are like, yeah, I'll still keep playing it. That's less than a percent of a percent. We had two whole seasons in a year. We had that same battle pass for six months straight. And then we had another season, same battle pass six months straight. And then finally we got Forge. Forge is literally the only thing keeping Halo Infinite like going at this point. I still love watching people like show off their Forge creations because I still think there's so many talented people out there and there's no real map makers in any other games anyway. But yeah, that's where I stand with Halo Infinite. Do I think it could make a comeback? Yes. I wouldn't be surprised if Microsoft is already cooking up another Halo game because they realize that they messed up here. Maybe they learn from their mistakes and then just relaunch it because I do think that if they fix a lot of its core issues, it could make a small comeback, but they, they basically have to do a relaunch and add a whole new game mode like Battle to get anywhere near, you know? Anyway, that's where Halo Infinite is. I know you guys are excited for Hyperscape. I know how many y'all in the chat not only have started following me or even uh, started watching my YouTube or started watching my Twitch, whatever. I know a lot of people know how much I love Hyperscape. I would say that Hyperscape is an A tier. Below Blood Hunt. Let me explain. I think fundamentally Hyperscape's gameplay loop was very good, but the one thing that they messed up with pretty badly was making the game a little too sweaty. That's because the movement is crazy. Like the game inherently had a lot of problems when it came with its extreme movement and the fact that every gun was hit scan. So what ended up happening was that a lot of people that got really into Hyperscape and got really good at Hyperscape were just stomping lobbies like left and right. Being a new player in Hyperscape was miserable because there was just so much broken stuff. It just felt like impossible to like actually navigate. That's usually not a problem, but you need a player base for a battle royale to work. The sweatiness would be fine in like a 5v5 setting, but if you're trying to get 60 players to come in or 100 players to come in, you're going to need some noobs in there, right? But that's one thing. Like, say there was millions of players, you wouldn't notice that, right? The other thing that also wasn't that good for Hyperscape was the fact that, and this all comes back to it being like not noob friendly. So even if you're new to the game and you're only facing other new people, it was pretty difficult to like secure kills because the time to kill was pretty long and you had people just flying up with slams and dashes and everything in between. If a new person runs armor lock and slam and, and is able to get away, it's pretty frustrating. The other thing too is that its timing was bad because it came out after 
Fortnite's success, after Apex's success, after Warzone. Those three were like all on top at the time. It didn't have better movement than Apex. It didn't have better cosmetics than Fortnite. It wasn't as noob friendly as Warzone. So you have these three games that are just like better than it in every way. So it was always just like the little brother to all of them that could never just outshine them. Say there was like a random weird scenario where Hyperscape came out before Apex Legends or something or before Fortnite. That would be the only time I think it would have, I think it would have actually thrived and done okay. But the timing was just bad. Next we got Icons Combat Arena. I'm going to put that in D tier. It was obviously going to die. I don't think it was dead on arrival. I think people were really excited for a melee competitor. It was a platform fighter that was very reminiscent of melee, but there was no way you could justify playing it over melee. You know what I mean? It was free. So that was kind of cool. Some people really did enjoy it. I, for one, like enjoyed playing it here and then, but the whole time I'm just like, this is cool, but why would I play this over Smash Ultimate or why would I play this over Melee? And Icons basically closed down. Now they're a game called Rush Down Revolt, which is a whole different game. It uses a lot of the same models and a lot of the maps, but otherwise it's a whole different game. And I've already covered that before in, my, in another video because they, they sponsored me, I'm not gonna lie. If they had a more of a budget, maybe they could push it out, but I think it's near impossible to try and compete with Smash Ultimate and Smash Bros. Like genuinely, yeah. like the only only two games to ever successfully corner like at least a niche audience has been Brawlhalla and Rivals of Aether. Otherwise, trying to compete against Smash Bros without your own IP is going to be impossible. You know what I mean? So yeah. Next up, we got Knockout City. Oh my god, the dodgeball game. I'm gonna put it above Apex Mobile. I think I'm gonna put it in top of C tier. So Knockout City is so unique. Like I'm not gonna deny it was out there. It was cool. It was like this really fun dodgeball 3v3 third person shooter it was super unique but i could also just tell like this was not gonna last you know i had a feeling one of the biggest turning off points for me was definitely its style i think its style looked really bad that's a big problem like i was explaining to people like if you're gonna make a free-to-play game or even a game that's cheaper but it's relying heavily on cosmetics you got to make sure that your game looks good right and so i could never see anyone actually wanting to buy anything for the game some people did but like not as much as you would expect like people to buy in fortnite or apex on top of that 20 dollars is a weird price point like it should have just launched free so yeah i know it's weird because it's like obviously a dodgeball game that's like goofy but i do think if knockout city looked more realistic it would have been kind of badass imagine having like these like really tough looking dudes just playing dodgeball i think that would have been kind of hype uh guys this is not the halfway point so i would love to tell you guys about my my merch look at that oh wow look at that first show merchandise for noobs dude wow look at that what oh oh Sheesh, sheesh. Multiverses. So Multiverses is a game that I really, really liked. And for some reason, they just stopped updating it. Uh, I'm gonna put it at the top of B tier. Uh, the reason why it's not A tier is because there were a ton of problems with the game. Like I said, it's an uphill battle trying to compete against Smash Bros, but they had the IP to do it. Then they just stopped updating the IPs. Warner Brothers stopped releasing characters from their catalog. They have so many characters they could have chose from and they just stopped kind of out of nowhere. And they're claiming that's because they need to restart the beta and stuff. But beyond that, it's not just about the characters. The gameplay itself was clunkier than Smash Bros. I think the gameplay could have been a lot better. There's something just off about the net code as well. And I'm not saying that like Smash Bros has good online. It does not. And I also think that focusing on 2v2 was not the play. If they're still gonna hold it off for another year in the beta and re-release, I hope they re-release with a game that is better for 1v1 and not 2v2 because 2v2 is doo-doo. I think most people prefer 1v1s, right? Especially people that that make content on platform fighting and are competitive about platform fighting and multiverses going all in on the 2v2 genre was very strange and kind of out there. That's, I think, what held back multiverses on top of the fact that they just refused to update. And they had options. We've talked about it, but they got every single character from Cartoon Network. They got every character from Lord of the Rings. They got every character from Harry Potter. They had the ability to expand this roster and keep people coming and, and getting people hyped. They just didn't, bro. Next up, we have something very similar to multiverses, and that's Nickelodeon All-Star Brawl. The difference between multiverses and Nickelodeon All-Star Brawl is jarring because Nickelodeon All-Star Brawl was way worse. It looked terrible. There was no voice acting, so you didn't hear SpongeBob's <laughs> You didn't hear Nigel Thornberry's smashing. You didn't hear Danny Phantom's I'm going ghost. Like what? You're not going to make a platform fighter that has no voice acting. The game feels terrible. The game was like, oh, I hated how it felt. It had a pretty stacked cast, but I think the gameplay was terrible and the actual aesthetic was also equally as terrible. Nickelodeon All-Star Brawl F tier. I think it was dead on arrival. I played it. I hated it. and I knew it was going to die and it's dead. But hey. They have Garfield. They got Garfield. Lasagna. Lasagna. Rainbow Six Extraction. 
It was the Rainbow Six game, but with like the zombie element to it. I didn't hate it, but I definitely think that I knew like who was this for? You know what I mean? Like, I don't think Rainbow Six fans cared. I don't think fans of zombie games cared. I just didn't know why they decided to make Rainbow Six Extraction in the year of our Lord and Savior 2022. Like, I think it's D tier. I think low D tier. It was so obvious it was going to die. I didn't feel like it needed to be an entirely different game. That could have easily just been like an event. Is there anybody that really was like hyped about the game? Like, if you are, leave a comment in the comments down below. Like, anyway, now we got Realm Royale. Okay, you guys have to remember, like, you got to put yourself five years ago, six years ago, back in time. So, imagine you are in 2018 and Fortnite just came out. So, people are really hyped about Battle Royales. So, Hi Res comes in and makes their own Battle Royale. And it's not bad. There's actually some elements to it that are really cool. The foraging mechanics and the chicken is really fun. But overall, it was just a clunky mess, you know? And they they updated it. They kept it going. People really did like it. I remember like Ninja like saying he loves it more than Fortnite at one point. I remember that. Don't quote me on that. I just remember. I don't know. Part of me in my soul, it just knew it wasn't going to last. The top of seats here. It was just cheaply made and made kind of in a rush. And I think if hi -Rez gave it a little more time to really polish it out before just releasing it to the world, it probably had a chance. But otherwise, not so much. Ah, Rogue Company. Rogue Company could have been something pretty tight. Gunplay wise, not too bad. The gameplay was a little wonky. I think the third person part of it was actually bad. Like I almost think it would have been better off as a first person shooter. The actual characters they designed were super tight. Yeah, I always thought Glitch's aesthetic in his design was always super fire. I thought a lot of the characters were really cool. I actually really thought it had a chance. I do think being third person is a detriment for the shooter genre. It gives you kind of like an unfair advantage because you can around corners and so you lose a little bit of that competitive integrity and i think rogue company really wanted to be taken seriously as a competitive class-based shooter and i think it could have if it just started off really strong with maybe similar gunplay to like you know call of duty type games i think people are always itching for something to replace call of duty and build upon it and it'd be better than call of duty i also think that it also didn't look that polished it looks a little cheaply made like it felt like a mobile game they decided to collab with dr disrespect and then he stopped playing it i get it i've collabed with splitgate before but i didn't stop playing it i've always supported it and I feel like it's one thing to give a person a skin because people don't have to play the skin. But you give somebody a freaking map, players are always going to play and it's always going to remind the players, huh, he doesn't play that game anymore. <laughs> well, I wonder why he stopped playing that game. And now you get that in their head and now it's constantly reminding them that the game is dead. Another thing too is that they didn't really care about the competitive integrity of the game because they decided to give characters skins that completely changed what they look like. Like I remember they released like a Rambo skin. That's not good when you have a class-based shooter. You want to know that you're fighting a Dima. You want to know that you're fighting a glitch. And if you're cosmetics change that drastically that doesn't work there's a reason why valorant doesn't even let you change the skins of your characters apex legends they have skins that drastically alter what the character looks like but for the most part they try to make sure that that the skin still looks like the characters overwatch does the same thing so real company though let's see where i want to put it probably bottom of b tier i do think it deserved better overall rumbleverse for me i knew it was dead on arrival but for others they think it's like the greatest game ever and did nothing wrong it's truly like really out there right i think that rumbleverse it's like below realm in C tier. Rumbleverse to me, it was always gonna be a hard thing to sell to people. I think it was just so goofy and wonky. It always just felt off in a way, but when you actually play it, it's so fun. It was like a ton of fun. While I did totally see it coming, like I kind of knew like, yeah, this game's probably not gonna last long. I just knew that anytime somebody actually gave it a shot, it was a good time. It was a battle royale where you like wrestled people, you like punched people and wrestled them and beat the crap out of them and knocked them out. It's amazing. I give them mad respect for trying to do something unique, but I just knew. Now we're on to some of the big names, some big Big names here. We got Spellbreak. Spellbreak's gone. Yeah, it's, a, it's truly a dead game. I'm putting Spellbreak on the top of beats here. I think that Spellbreak was really good and such a cool concept. Really fun battle royale wizard game. You're shooting like ice spheres at people. You're shooting fire. It really was its own thing. I genuinely think what held back Spellbreak was the fact that it was really difficult for people to get good at. The skill ceiling was crazy high. Probably the highest skill ceiling out of any game on this list. And what that ended up doing was making it so that the moment you finally got decently good at the game, and at this point, the player count had already dwindled, you were only facing sweats. So anyone that was new and tried the game was getting bodied. 
Blade. They also never updated the gauntlets. Like they never gave us new gauntlets, which is the equivalent of like their legends in this game. There wasn't really much going on for it on the update side of things. It just felt off in a way. And you can check out more about it on my Spellbreak for Noobs video, shameless plug. For a content creator perspective, why would I want to keep playing Spellbreak if nothing's new? From a professional perspective, you also want to see some like variety in the, in the gameplay as well. I know people that played the game were like obsessed with it. Like they loved it. They sunk hours, like thousands of hours. And I liked it. Whenever I played it, it was always a fun time. And then when they added like the domination game mode, that was super fun. Like it made me realize that the gunplay was probably better suited for a non-battle royale mode. But yeah, overall, Spellbreak definitely deserved better. Top of B tier. Split gets the top of A tier. There were a couple missteps, but damn, it was so good. One of the only issues I had with Splitgate is that like if Splitgate had Halo Infinite's graphics, it would have been amazing. It was every Halo fan's dream. We all really liked it. What I think really kind of ironically held back Splitgate and it's a hot take. I know it's a hot take. I'm going to say it. it's going to be steamy. It could have been better without portals. <laughs> The funniest part about Splitgate is like they kind of knew that like the portals were more of a gimmick and something that would turn off a lot of players. So like when you say the statement like Macro, just go play Halo. No, because Splitgate did something better than Halo. Splitgate's gunplay was so solid. It felt amazing. Its movement felt really good. It didn't feel like there was anything super overpowered. I played Splitgate one time and they made a no portal mode and I was having so much fun. I was like, wow, this really makes you realize how good the gunplay is in Splitgate. So while I do love the portal mechanic and I was actually pretty good with the portal mechanic. I was doing like these triple portals and going like going crazy with it. I think that turned off a lot of players. I think they accidentally made a better Halo game than most Halo games before it. And I'm so glad that they got a ton of developer money. And now they're starting from scratch to come up with a whole new game. And it's probably going to be in the arena shooter type sandbox because they understood that they struck gold with this gameplay. So I really do think that like if they hone that gameplay down, update the graphics, make the graphics look phenomenal, make it look amazing, make it feel crisp. We could potentially be seeing one of the best games ever made. So I'm super excited for that. This is one of those beautiful moments where the death of Splitgate is gonna grow into potentially one of the best games ever made, hopefully. Man, this is one of those things like, if they were the developers that made Halo Infinite, Halo Infinite would be crushing it because I trust these developers with what they're, whatever they're gonna work on. And I think it would have been tight to see them work on Halo. Anyway, last three. Oh, uh, we got super people. I'm putting in an F tier. I'm just gonna be real with you. It was dead on arrival. The game was worse PUBG. The game was just a mobile game. It looked terrible. It felt terrible. The gameplay sucked. The movement sucked. The map sucked. The design sucked. Everything about the game sucked. It's so bad. They already released Super People 2. You know what I mean? So like, I don't think there's any more to say about Super People. I don't even want to talk about it anymore. Let's just be honest. Moving on. Oh, Temtem, dude. I'm putting it in the bottom of the D tier. Let's be honest here. Pokemon is never going away. Pokemon hasn't been good in years. Pokemon has progressively made worse games and they always outperform themselves. So it doesn't matter if your game is objectively better mechanically than Pokemon because Pokemon is just always gonna win. Sorry, Temtem. It was the biggest uphill battle. Other games are having an uphill battle, like fighting against like Smash Bros and stuff. Fighting against Pokemon is literally trying to walk up a skyscraper. It's literally impossible, dude. Almost all the designs are kind of bad for most of their Temtem. Temtem, dude. Uh, 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 uh. So yeah, obviously Titanfall 2's last and some people already guessed it. There's a reason I have an S tier, did nothing wrong. And that's gonna go for Titanfall 2. Let's talk about Titanfall 2 again. I've talked about Titanfall 2 all the time and I will talk about it never ending. I genuinely believe that Titanfall 2 did nothing wrong. Some can argue like, hey man, the Titans were a little bit overwhelming. True, like to an extent, the Titans could be overwhelming for new players and it turned off a lot of new players. There's a lot of game modes that don't have Titans. Pilot v Pilot, Live Fire, two of my favorite game modes, amazing. I think Pilot v Pilot is peak Titanfall. But regardless, even with the Titans, ton of fun, super fun time. What killed Titanfall 2? Look, I know the servers are still up, but there's still DDoS and hackers and people slowly destroying that side of things with no update in sight. And I know North Star still a thing. I made the videos on North Star. I understand that these are all still things, but at the end of the day, we have to acknowledge that Titanfall 2 failed. It didn't fail us, but Titanfall 2 failed. Will we see Titanfall 3? Maybe. Thankfully, Apex Legends is a hit and Apex Legends uses a ton of the lore from Titanfall. The more I see these clips on Twitter of people doing these crazy movement mechanics, the more I see people posting clips of Black Ops 3 or posting clips of like all these different games that have like crazy movement and they're like wow this would be sick the more i just know that the children they yearn for titanfall <laughs> so what killed titanfall 2 were two things ea 
No, but EA was one of them. And let me explain why. They had the launch of Battlefield 1. They knew that Battlefield 1 was coming out. It's their game. And they knew that the next Call of Duty, I think it was Infinite Warfare or Advanced Warfare, one of the other. I get them confused because they're both irrelevant to me. But one of the Call of Duty games was being released. They decided to sandwich the release of Titanfall 2 between two big AAA games. And that guaranteed that the sales were going to go down. That's one thing. EA also didn't market it that heavily. I think EA just didn't care for marketing it. I think they, they could have put a lot more money into just the budget of marketing it. That would have been huge. And then two, I think that if EA and Respawn cared more about the game, and I know they did, but like cared more, they would have promoted an esports scene for it too. Because I think that was when esports was like a little bit starting. And the Pilot v Pilot at its highest level is kind of crazy to watch. Like it's a little unbalanced at times, but that's where they would come in. They would be the ones that balance it. They'd be the ones that actually make it good. And I think that would have been sick to see like professional Titanfall players. But that's like an alternate timeline where Titanfall 2 thrived. And then we have Titanfall 3, you know? I still have hopes that we get Titanfall fall three like i said the children they yearn for it but uh yeah that's my dead games tier list do you uh, agree with my list do you disagree with my list let me know in the comments down below if there's a game that i didn't mention here and you want to put it in there let me know in the comments where you'd put that game like if you think it's an s tier or f tier whatever you think so thank you so much for watching thank you so much for vibing play the outro now